Poems Every Child Should Know Edited by Mary E. Burt Section 50 Read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg This section contains two poems The Homes of England and Horatius at the Bridge Part 4 Continued The Homes of England I wonder if the English people appreciate the homes of England. It is a stately poem, worthy of a Goethe or a Shakespeare. England is distinctly a country of homes, pretty, little, humble homes, as well as stately palaces and castles, homes well made of stone or brick for the most part, and clad with ivy and roses. Who would not be proud to have had such a home as Anne Hathaway's humble cottage, or one of the little huts? in the Lake District. The homes of America are often more palatial, especially in small cities, but the use of wood in America makes them less substantial than the slate and brick houses of England. The stately homes of England, how beautiful they stand, amidst their tall ancestral trees, o'er all the pleasant land. The deer across their greensward bound, through shade and sunny gleam, and the swan glides past them with the sound of some rejoicing stream. The merry homes of England, around their hearths by night, what gladsome looks of household love meet in the ruddy light. Their woman's voice flows forth in song, or childish tale is told, or lips move tunefully along some glorious page of old. The blessed homes of England, how softly on their bowers is laid the holy quietness, that breathes from Sabbath hours. Solemn yet sweet, the church bell's chime floats through their woods at morn. All other sounds in that still time of breeze and leaf are born. The cottage homes of England, by thousands on her plains, they are smiling o'er the silvery brooks and round the hamlet's fanes. Through glowing orchards forth they peep, each from its nook of leaves. And fearless there the lowly sleep, as the bird beneath their eaves. The free, fair homes of England, long, long in hut and hall, May hearts of native proof be reared to guard each hallowed wall. And green forever be the groves, and bright the flowery sod, Where first the child's glad spirit loves its country and its God. Felicia Hemans Horatius at the Bridge Horatius at the Bridge is too long a poem for children to memorize, but I never saw a boy who did not want some stanzas of it. Hold the bridge with me. Boys like that motto instinctively. Lars Porsena of Clusium, by the nine gods he swore that the great house of Tarkin should suffer wrong no more. By the nine gods he swore it, and named a trysting day, and bade his messengers ride forth, east and west, and south and north, to summon his array. East and west, and south and north, the messengers ride fast, and tower and town and cottage have heard the trumpet's blast. Shame on the false Etruscan who lingers in his home, when Porsena of Clusium is on the march for Rome. The horsemen and the footmen are pouring in amain, from many a stately marketplace, from many a fruitful plain, from many a lonely hamlet, which, hid by beech and pine, like an eagle's nest, hangs on the crest of purple Apennine. The harvests of Aricium this year old men shall reap, this year young boys in Umbro shall plunge the struggling sheep. And in the vats of Luna this year the must shall foam Round the white feet of laughing girls Whose sires have marched to Rome. There be thirty chosen prophets, the wisest of the land, Who alway by Lars Porsena both morn and evening stand. Evening and morn the thirty have turned the verses o'er, Traced from the right on linen white by mighty seers of yore. And with one voice the thirty have their glad answer given. Go forth, go forth, Lars Porsena, go forth, beloved of heaven. Go and return in glory to Clusium's royal dome, 
and hang round Nurcia's altars the golden shields of Rome. And now hath every city sent up her tale of men, the foot are fourscore thousand, the horse are thousands ten. Before the gates of Sutrium is met the great array, a proud man was Lars Porsena upon the trysting day. For all the Etruscan armies were ranged beneath his eye, and many a banished Roman, and many a stout ally, and with a mighty following to join the muster came, the Tusculan Mamilius, prince of the Latian name. But by the yellow Tiber was tumult and affright, from all the spacious champaign to Rome men took their flight, a mile around the city the throng stopped up the ways, a fearful sight it was to see through two long nights and days. Now from the rock Tarpeian could the wan burghers spy, the line of blazing villages red in the midnight sky. The fathers of the city, they sat all night and day, for every hour some horsemen came with tidings of dismay. To eastward and to westward have spread the Tuscan bands, nor house nor fence nor dovecot in Crustumerium stands. Verbena down to Ostia hath wasted all the plain, Aster hath stormed Janiculum, and the stout guards are slain. I wis in all the senate there was no heart so bold, but sore it ached and fast it beat when that ill news was told. Forthwith up rose the consul, up rose the fathers all, in haste they girded up their gowns and hied them to the wall. They held a council standing before the river gate, short time was there, ye well may guess, for musing or debate. Out spoke the consul roundly, the bridge must straight go down, for since Janiculum is lost, naught else can save the town. Just then a scout came flying, all wild with haste and fear. Two arms, two arms, Sir Consul, Lars Porsena is here. On the low hills to westward the Consul fixed his eye, and saw the swarthy storm of dust rise fast along the sky. And nearer, fast and nearer, doth the red whirlwind come, and louder still and still more loud from underneath that rolling cloud is heard the trumpet's war-note proud, the trampling and the hum. And plainly and more plainly now through the gloom appears, far to left and far to right, in broken gleams of dark blue light, the long array of helmets bright, the long array of spears. And plainly and more plainly above the glimmering line, now might ye see the banners of twelve fair cities shine. But the banner of proud Clusium was the highest of them all, the terror of the Umbrian, the terror of the Gaul. Fast by the royal standard, o'erlooking all the war, Lars Porsena of Clusium sat in his ivory car. By the right wheel rode Mamilius, prince of the Latian name, and by the left false Sextus that wrought the deed of shame. But when the face of Sextus was seen among the foes, a yell that rent the firmament from all the town arose. On the housetops was no woman but spat toward him and hissed, no child but screamed out curses and shook its little fist. But the consul's brow was sad, and the consul's speech was low, and darkly looked he at the wall and darkly at the foe. Their van will be upon us before the bridge goes down, and if they once may win the bridge, what hope to save the town? Then out spake brave Horatius, the captain of the gate. To every man upon this earth death cometh soon or late, and how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods, and for the tender mother who dandled him to rest, and for the wife who nurses his baby at her breast? and for the holy maidens who feed the eternal flame to save them from false sextus that wrought the deed of shame. Hew down the bridge, Sir Consul, with all the speed ye may. I, with two more to help me, will hold the foe in play. In yon straight path a thousand may well be stopped by three. Now who will stand on either hand and keep the bridge with me? 
Then out spake Spurius Lartius, A Ramnian proud was he, I will stand at thy right hand And keep the bridge with thee. And out spake strong Herminius, Of Titian blood was he, I will abide on thy left side And keep the bridge with thee. Horatius, quoth the consul, As thou sayst, so let it be. And straight against that great array Forth went the dauntless three. For Romans in Rome's quarrel Spared neither land nor gold, Nor son nor wife, nor limb nor life, In the brave days of old. Now while the three were tightening Their harness on their backs, The consul was the foremost man To take in hand an axe. And fathers mixed with commons Seized hatchet, bar, and crow, and smote upon the planks above, and loosed the props below. Meanwhile the Tuscan army, right glorious to behold, came flashing back the noonday light, rank behind rank, like surges bright of a broad sea of gold. Four hundred trumpets sounded a peal of warlike glee, as that great host with measured tread and spears advanced, and ensigns spread, rolled slowly toward the bridge's head, where stood the dauntless three. This poem is continued in the next section. End of section 50. Read by Kara Schallenberg on November 2nd, 2006, in Oceanside, California.